don't give that room for corruption to breed? Well, one has to look at it from two angles. Whether parliamentary, whether presidential, there's nothing wrong in the two systems. It is the people who manage within the two systems that the cool prince of whatever you want to say. My view is this. If we are going to go parliamentary, let us have a, you know, a referendum. And if the people want it, that's OK. If you want a presidential system, then we should have a presidential system that will not allow loopholes where an individual will accumulate so much power as to be able to do anything he wants in the name of a presidential system of governance. What I'm saying is this. I have described on this forum here the present system as a rotten egg. So how can you amend a rotten egg? The Yoruba say, Ongbe Odo, Sori Odo, you are putting zero over zero. The answer is zero. So there is no need to amend the present constitution with the present National Assembly men are doing. One of the basic faults in this constitution, one of the basic culprits that create corruption is the National Assembly. We were lucky, one of them, three weeks or four weeks ago, I have always said it here, that it takes 290 million naira to maintain a senator every year. I am not saying from my information. That is the information Obasanjo gave me when I took my lawyers to greet him. And I attacked him in the presence of two senators. And he called the two of them out in the presence of my lawyer and said, look, each of you, 290 million to maintain a senator. Now, Sani has told us that they take uh, 13 million a month, a month, which is 150 million a year. Well, you can see such a system. Sani is the first senator who will confirm that their salary and emoluments is above 1.3 that has been, you know, uh, constitutionally allotted to them to be paid. So you can find that the present system that gives all executive powers to Mr. President under Section 5 of the Constitution. You know, we cannot continue with that system because we are being shortchanged by people who are operating the system, not the system per se. If the National Assembly is allowed to perform well and look after the excesses of the executive, if the state assemblies are allowed to, you know, draw attention of the governor to many malpractices, then Chikina, that constitution will be acceptable. You, you say that it's, it's the people operating the oh, system. Yes. So will it then add up to you if we look at that system on the one hand and try to see that we change it, uh, maybe constitutionally or, or otherwise, but if the president, the former president, Chief Olishiko Shego Obasanjo, comes out to say that we are a failing country, we are a failing government, where the PDP has failed, the APC has failed. And when he made that uh, comment, he was talking to a group of young Nigerians who uh, are aspiring into politics. Do they give you that confidence that that is the platform on which this country should be run? Look, let me be honest. Our past leaders, including Obasanjo, always want to be in the center of power, even when they are out of power. You ask yourself, why should somebody who has ruled Nigeria, three years as a military ruler, eight years as a civilian ruler, will continue for the past 10 years to castigate any government that comes after him? It can be two things. He might have the interest of the country at heart. That is, those who believe in him. Alternatively, it might be a way to make sure that he still belongs to this periphery of power and that nobody will try to look at his background to see what he had done when he was a president. So, whichever side you are. What did he do when he was a president? No, no, no. What I'm saying is that it depends on each individual. I like Obasanjo, so I can defend him. If you don't like him, you say, oh, what he's doing is just to make sure that he's always in the center of the politics of the day. 
so that the government in power will count to him somehow and that his past will not be you know brought out so the problem is that what do we need 36 days for in nigeria now let's ask ourselves 80 percent of the revenue nigeria makes today is going being used to maintain the system of governance which includes payment of salaries to legislators and other you know i can assure you if you call a governor today in nigeria ask him the names of his personal assistants he will not be able to name 10 percent of them a governor who is expelled to have nine commissioners a commissioner to now have like 20 25 special assistants how do you give out to capital projects how do you make education you know viable how do you make health when all your money goes in pain all this you have 36 attorney generals uh, i'm just wondering chief so why then do you think that if, if these are all the cases why are we not willing to change it is it that look we like it the way it is okay let me tell you this the people who are expected to change it are the people who are enjoying it okay look at it i have made this point clear when jonathan with due respect to him a fine gentleman as far as i'm concerned set up this um, constitutional this thing i made it here in this gym, uh, channel uh, that there was no legal foundation yeah. whatever they come out with there was no legal instrument upon which that you know decision of that assembly will become law because if they had laid the foundation we will not be talking today about that comfort again it will have become law but the question is as you asked who are the people who will make it the law when they are the ones benefiting from you know the rotting egg so we just have to look and i think you asked me a question how do we change it and i said i'm not a seer i am not a pastor i don't see you know tomorrow but we need a strong force to come down to this country what about the third force can the third force oh, well, do it? Third force, whatever you think is the third force. <laughs> no, SDP calls whatever itself as the think. third force. So. I'm not a seer. Do you, think, do you think that an opposition party, for instance, now that Obasanjo has said that uh, Chief Obasanjo has said the APC, the PDP, they're birds of the same feather, they've practically failed Nigeria. Will the third force be the, the, the messiah for Nigeria? Well, look back at Ghana 25 years ago and look at Ghana today. What has happened to Ghana? There was a force that came. So I am not saying I know a particular force. But what I am saying is that if you and I believe we cannot continue with this system of governance, let us be honest. What is happening in Nigeria today can wreck another country that is not as strong as Nigeria. What we are going through today, we've never seen it in Nigeria. And it's not the fault of the people governing us. Is that, look, whatever you think about Nigeria, three factors are responsible for our demise, which is coming soon if we are not careful. First is ethnicity. Secondly is religion. Those two now breed corruption. Corruption will stand on its own, then these other two items will now come and drag it out and until we look straight in the face to ourselves the headsman problem today if we are not careful will destroy this country i said it here our leaders will only criticize let us be honest obasanjo was here for eight years all these killings in makodi had been happening then did he bring the solution jonathan was here for six years all these killings, especially in 2014, was double what we see today. Did he provide a solution? Shoyinka will come down here and criticize, blood here, blood here, blood here. Did he offer us a solution? You asked me that question when I was in this place. Look, we in civilized countries, when you have problems like this, the first thing people do is to look for solution, not criticism. Buhari, does Buhari give land for ranching? Does the federal government has, can have capacity? Beno has brought out a law.